This book reminded me of a pet peeve I have for publishers. When they don't put the number the book has in the series on the spine or anywhere in the book, all you have is like a long list, in this case a long list of like, hey, these are the mysteries in this series. They are probably in order, but the spine wouldn't tell me as much. Hi folks, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat and today I would like to talk about The Inspector and Mrs. Jeffries by Emily Brightwell. I believe the first one in a Victorian murder mystery. I say I believe it's the first one because the characters keep referring back to cases they solved already, but I think this actually happened before the series properly started. As far as I've seen on the internet, this is the correct order for the novels, and this is the first. Inspector Witherspoon is faced with a difficult homicide to solve the murder of Dr. Slocum. Thankfully, his housekeeper, Mrs. Jeffries, has a talent for detective work and sets the whole household on helping the inspector out. Overall, this was a fun and short murder mystery. Some of the things might be a bit easy to guess, but I think this is a combination of the reader having read quite a few murder mysteries and being free to jump to conclusions, unlike the inspector, who still does this sometimes, or the actual person solving this crime, Mrs. Jeffries. And the fact that this book has been published in the 90s, so some of the stuff might have been redone a couple of times since. Over the course of the story, some of the characters display some views on foreigners and women, that are very much in line with the Victorian age, but are still horrendous and made me roll my eyes pretty hard. At least the main character, Mrs. Jeffries, has fairly modern values and is rather outspoken about them too. So Mrs. Jeffries tries to solve this case and help the inspector out without him knowing. Which means that quite often she will drop hints or she will say something and make it out like it was his idea. Problem here is that means some of the characters will treat him like a bumbling idiot essentially and in some of the scenes you get from his point of view you can also see how they get there and it's quite accurate. But it's still not a particularly nice thing to do to your employer I guess. Especially because the whole household is actually quite fond of him. But then, when it gets to the final stages of solving this case and connecting some dots, Mrs. Jeffrey suddenly trusts him to get it right, which is dropping a couple of hints, while before she had to be fairly clear about what he needs to reconsider. But no, towards the end she can just drop hints and he can actually connect the dots correctly. And I was like, hmm, the intelligence level we've seen from this inspector so far does not fill me with confidence that he can actually do this. Most of the characters were intelligent enough and trying to be helpful, so it was quite fun to follow them around. Even though you might be able to see where things are going or who committed the murder, fairly early on, at least I could, it was still fun to follow the characters in the investigation and see how they get there. As ever, when reading anything that plays in the Victorian age or generally just in the past but in a fancy household, I am amazed at how many people they needed to keep just one house going. So while this first book came out in 93, the series is still going, as far as I can see there's another book coming out next year, so if you want to get started on a Victorian murder mystery series, there are still more to come and there are quite a few books to catch up on. I imagine that over the course of this series, Mrs. Jeffries will ramp up her efforts to make her employer marry, so you know, he's not alone in his old age and there might be kids in this household at some point. <laughs> I don't know, her first attempt at getting him to maybe go out and meet someone were kind of hilarious and I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how this will go. Overall I quite enjoyed this book, even though you could possibly tell just while reading it it's a bit older, but I think it deserves this cat. 
And if you like your cozy mysteries in a different time and age and without any pets, unfortunately, then this might be for you. Do let me know in the comments what your favorite cozy mystery series is that plays not in the modern age. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to help this channel out. And I'll be back next week with another video. Bye, folks!